check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hello. Hello, Krabby. Are you gonna are you gonna say something? No, because <laughs> we literally just started and Michael said he's in a bad headspace, so I'm I'm in just I'm I was I was in a great headspace, by the way. And then uh my kids are out there uh freaking fighting over some stupid food that they want and someone got the last of it and someone's snatching it out of the other person's hand and I'm like, dude, you guys act like you don't eat 12 meals a day. I'm, I'm whatever. Okay. I'm good now. I'm good. I was the worst. <laughs> this reminds me of yesterday. For no, you ever just wake up and you just hate everybody? You're like, just everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter who, you just hate them. And yesterday I was that way. So I was just such a dick to my kids. I was like, be quiet. I was like, go. I was like, get out of here. I was like, nonstop. They're like, what is your problem? I'm like, just go take a bath. And they're like having the best time in the bath and I'm all like raging out here for no reason. Like they're just laughing and having a great time. And I'm just like, ugh. Sometimes it happens. <sighs> Welcome. I need a trip. Highly uncircumcised. Hey, 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 highly uncircumcised, man. Highly. Welcome, Superman. Uh, we are both wearing shirts indicative of who we think we are. <laughs> Black Black Superman. Superman. <laughs> I am wearing a shirt that says, just want to drink wine and pet my dogs. That's so like just bougie. Don't worry about it. So no, I want to talk about that. So that's the oh kind of person that I feel like I would just run into and like napper or something like that you know just out with your dogs all rich and bougie drinking your little wine okay we can move on now that's all and i want to say considering that i'm the opposite of rich after the pandemic I'm not working <laughs> and, for the, a year. And, and the opposite of bougie i don't even look in my bank account i don't i don't want to know when it when it ends up going negative i was like oh it happened i don't know <laughs> and so Ooh. we're making a podcast look at that like I, I have no idea how we're gonna make money out of this but hey here I am. Amy, <laughs> pay me my money in cash <laughs> yeah and, and maybe we can talk about that i think it's interesting and it's basically everything i've been dealing with in this year and you too although you handle it much better than me probably i i just it's so in my head the idea of of reinventing ourselves almost you know Be, and i keep saying this like becoming a new person it's like i mean i'm not becoming a new person but i am like i was a poker player for 17 years right and people are like well why don't you just go play poker again i'm like i don't want to i yeah, don't you know, want you know, to you know that's your occupation that's not who you are right that's yes. that's really the that's really the problem for me in a lot of ways with how people deal with and, and and treat each other and I know I just went real deep and serious on you right there but I'm I, here for it yeah you're here for it nice I really get uh hmm I don't even know what the right word is it's not frustrated but I just get like ugh, when people are like what do you do and then you tell them what you do and you're like that's who you are I'm a lawyer he's the lawyer I, I work at McDonald's. Ah, you just work at McDonald's. It's like, wh what are you talking about? See, for me, and you just said, I handle this better than you. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that my first thought was, this is just who I am. Whether I was an IT director or a PC installer 20 years ago or whatever, like this has always been my, my personality and this has always been my makeup to like, deal with people and want to talk to people and want to like figure out life and, and and hopefully help some people and encourage some people and so forth so I don't think you're reinventing yourself I think you're just reconstructing what you do and and you hope and I hope and we hope that like it can become like our livelihood right like we, we end up getting paid someday but that's not even really the motivation the motivation is to like be doing what we want to do I hated IT. I hated it. I hated it for, I did it for, I did it since 19, 
98. So let's just call it 20 years. I would say for a, a solid half of that 20 years or more, I freaking hated my life as it pertained to work. Couldn't stand it. But it's what paid the bills, you know? And that's all it was. So anyway, the long and the short of it is like, why do we define ourselves by what we do for a living? This is why you and I, you always are like, why do we connect so well? And you think it's destiny, I think it's choice, and whatever, whatever it is, <laughs> this is why we get along so well, because I think 100% the same thing. This is so funny because Michael knows this. I'm actually starting another podcast, not a YouTube one, just a regular one, but um, all about personal development. And literally the first episode is what's your story and it's it's getting into the idea of like you are what you say you are basically and and what are you and how do we define ourselves it's exactly like that like when you meet somebody you're like oh what do you do and I fucking hate that question too I hate that question like because it, that's exactly it like oh you're a doctor oh right away then the judgment's like oh this is good good person I want to know this oh, you uh, work at McDonald's? Oh, okay. Like, I mean, it's just so dumb. It's such a terrible way to get well, to know somebody. And so I would always say to people at the table, I'd be like, oh, hey, after we talk, maybe kind of hit it off a little bit. Then I'd be like, well, what's your story? And people sometimes would look at me a little bit like, and then they would tell me though. And then they would make a list of all the things they are. But the question is, is like, what are we? right? What are all those things? How do we, how do we define them? Do we define them? So the, the real problem is, is that people think that they can sum you up and define you by whatever it is you do. So you just use the example of a doctor, right? So automatically people, the first, I don't care what anybody says, the first thing you think when someone tells you they're a doctor is, oh, they got money, right? Then you're like, oh, they're probably pretty smart. They were in school for 15 years or whatever to, to get that degree, residency and all that good stuff. So this, this conversation just made me think of a conversation I had with a friend of mine uh, a couple of years ago. She uh, she's a female friend. And we were just messing around talking. And I was like, so like when you were in your single days, like if a guy came up to you and wanted to talk to you and all that good stuff and, you know, he, you guys get to talking about like what you do and all that kind of stuff. And he says, oh, you know, I really don't do anything. And I asked her, I said, well, can he get your phone number? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, what if you're attracted to him? And what if, what if you guys have a chemistry and all that stuff? She's like, yeah, but he doesn't do anything. And I was like, but what if the guy's got $10 billion sitting in the bank and he doesn't want to do anything? What if what he's doing is what he wants to do? He's talking to you. And then he goes to get in his Bentley and drives to his house in Malibu and goes and sits there all day or plays golf. Like you literally sum this dude up because he said he didn't do anything. You didn't even, you wouldn't even investigate further. Like, what does that mean? Well, to be so fair, he's not is, really selling himself very well. Like I don't do anything. But why do I like, need I'm to sell myself through what I do? Like, so if but, I told you I was a rocket scientist, you'd be like, oh my God, I need no. help with my homework. I mean, like, what would it But I guess that's myself. the question. Like when you say, what's your story? Like if your story is like, I am nothing, I don't do anything. It's like, okay, well, I don't connect with you at all. Think, you know, like what more are we going to talk about? You know, you know I, that's, that's on you or on her or on me or whatever to, to go deeper. Like, okay, why don't you do anything? Then I can say, hey, you know what? I started a dot com in the late nineties and, you know, sold it to Microsoft for $10 billion. And then now, you know, well, I got some money, but hey, I just love to just, you know, rock out, just go Kerouac on the world, man. It, it's, it, it appears to me, you think that there's all these men out there who say, I don't do anything. And they actually have billions in the bank. And I would <laughs> yeah, have to I disagree that, that, that yeah, it'd be very hard to find one it's even, just but. It's an extreme example. It's very, I realized very that, extreme. you know. 99% of people are not going to be like, I don't do anything. And they're not going to be like, I don't do anything because they're rich, right? I mean, like, that's, that's, that's a unicorn. That's like, hey, man, that's the, what? You do nothing because you're rich? My number is 626. Wow. <laughs> 
I hope Esther doesn't watch this. Like some first of all, I was talking about the unicorn, female talking to the male. I wasn't talking about unicorn me. guy is gonna come up to Michael Esther and tell him he does nothing but has billions in the bank and the Michael's guy, gonna give what just happened here. That's what you said. So at any rate, here is the question. Wow. Like yes. From the beginning, what I was saying is that it's almost this this past year has been very tough for me. And I guess it's even tougher because I understand um, that I make the choices to create my life. I understand. That's how I see it. I know you see it differently. Um, but then sometimes those choices are the toughest thing for me to do. And the actions are the tough. Like, I know what I want to do. And then taking action towards them, then you meet up with all this resistance. And then you start doing things like numbing and distracting and avoiding. And uh, the word I think most people use is procrastinating. But it's all those things. It's, it's avoiding the uncomfortableness of, of the change. And that's the space that I have been in for the entire pandemic. And so <laughs> I've made zero dollars. So I could be that dude. I could be like, yeah, I don't do anything. And it'd be like, you have a billion dollars in bank? No, I just don't do anything. And I have no money at all. But I yeah, know but that- For a girl, it doesn't matter. For a girl, it doesn't matter. Guys, guys will just, you know, that, that that's all good with them it doesn't matter at the end of the day though your story is so much more than that I mean it is whatever you want it to be uh, I just saw something on one of the social media people were saying who would you be without your story um and that's the thing like and so then somebody put a comment below and said like think of it like this like let's say you and some other dude with a completely different life you go on a boat and the boat crashes and you both get amnesia and you wake up thinking you're each other. Like you have his story in your head and he has your story in his head. Now, who are you? I'm him. But that's the thing what? then, right? You're the story. You're this, it, we're the story that we tell ourselves. Like we are like what we say we are. So if, if, you're like so obsessed with money and the idea that you don't have enough of it, but you have so much of it. Like, I mean, don't go. Are you talking to me right now? Don't you go try to like, uh, don't try to go to his house and, and, and rob him, (laughs) but he has enough money, but he's constantly worried about what, because you're telling yourself. Wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about me? Are we still hypothetical? Did you just, no, I'm talking about you. Oh, you better get out of here, dude. You better get out of here. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You I can't believe you did that to me on the podcast. Go proceed. Did what? Tell everyone how much of you're obsessed with money. You they can I'm hear it in your story. Money, I'm, yes. I'm just, you're like, there's all these men out there who do nothing but have billions and they're unicorns and they're gonna, I'm gonna give them money. Oh my god, you just ran like eight different podcasts together. Okay. I didn't say the man was a unicorn because he's because I want to be him. I'm saying like how many guys are just out there just rich 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 and not doing nothing and some single woman meets him that's all i'm saying I, i'm married I, I don't know if you realize that I, I think you realize that so like that doesn't apply to me man i'm just giving you i'm giving you pearls of wisdom right here okay I'm giving you all kind of nuggets i'm giving you just straight up just yeah i like money so what i'm trying to take care of like for other people you do a good job already taking care of but so okay oh, let me let me let me ask you this then yes. then if i just met you and yes. i'm sitting next to you at the poker table and yes i don't say what do you do because i hate that question just like you i say what's your story they're like so what's your story we've been talking a little bit we played a couple hands we laughed and i'm like so what's your story what do you say I'd be like, well, I'm an IT director for this company. And, you know, because when you ask me, what's my story? That's honestly, I think what I'd be thinking you were talking about. But then if you said something like, no, I don't want to know what you do. I want to know what's your story. I'd be like, you don't, you can't handle my midriff. Like, you don't, you, you don't want me to take this shirt off right now. Like, I can't, I can't just give you my story see me here at the poker table with seven other dudes that are going to try and get information to try and like put the beat on me you know what I mean no I don't know what my story is but that's probably the longest part of it I have no idea I was feeling in time there when I said that I have no idea I don't know what my story is I just I'm just a guy that was born 
uh, to just, you know, uh, just be a gift to the world. That's all. Just okay. a guy that was born to be a gift to the freaking masses. Take a piece of me. Nicole, you have taken a piece of me. You got your piece. We're doing this so everyone else can get their little piece of me. You're welcome. Okay. I mean, if that's your story, that's your story. That's the thing. It, um, I but I think what's interesting, that's what I was just going to say. What's interesting is you say, I don't know. And you know what? I think that's what most of us say. I don't really know, which means we don't really know what we want. We don't really know who we are. We don't really know where we're going. We're just kind of doing the things that we need. We think we need to do to continue to get by, right? And I think that's why we end up in this like mind space all the time that I've been in this last year, right? Just loop it in my head, like all the things when really, if I just started taking little, like, like this podcast, right? We don't 100% know where it's going to go, but we have some ideas. We've made some plans. We planned for a long time, like we said, but it wasn't until we really just started taking action that now it's going, right? And now we're going to have all our other different problems with it, which is, you know, we're going to have the fear of judgment, which I, you know, the um, you gotta worry start about that. hate, uh, um, more work, whatever, you know, but, but the fact that we're doing it means we're moving we're moving it along. We're, we're, we're making our story. Whereas for the longest time, all it was was just in our head, you know, just ideas of what could be, we didn't know what we wanted, blah, blah, blah. And so I don't wonder if it's just about the action. Like you just start and you just do something. People are like, well, I don't know what to do. We'll start thinking about like what you want and then just take steps towards it. And it sounds so simple. But, and I know for sure it's the hardest thing to do because I've been taking a year to do it. But, but, but listen, but listen, but listen, in, in, in all seriousness right now, in all seriousness right now, um, I, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm very, very proud of you because I fortunately have, have been there to see like everything, right? So I watched you play poker for years and then I watched you get super like, I'm so done with poker and we would talk about like, and this is all obviously for the listeners, this is all pre-pandemic, right? So Nicole was always telling me like, God, I'm so done with poker. I want to yeah, do least, this. I want to do that. At least two like she, years before the pandemic. At, at least that. At yeah. least that. And 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 uh, I too was even like, I really only play because of the social connection. Like we have a lot of good friends that you and I share mutually from the poker world, you know, that we hang out with outside of poker tables and all that kind of stuff. So I love the social aspect of it, the actual playing and competition and trying to get big wins and all that got really like, just, I was over it. I didn't, I didn't need it. I didn't care about the money anymore. I stopped even caring about the losing of money. It was just like, you know, it was like, whatever. But anyway, I want to get back to my point, which is listening to you talk about you sometimes even as well as I know you just shocks me because it's so different than how you actually go about living. Mm -hmm. Because I watched you start, try and start another business pre-pandemic. And then when the pandemic hit and you, you know, late, got laid off or, you know, because of the pandemic and all that, you went like immediate, almost immediately into the life coaching and trying to do all that and all the while still trying to get me to come along and do a podcast with you. I mean, the truth of the matter is, and, and in all seriousness, and I don't mind saying this, this podcast would not be happening. And you and I both know this, if you were not super persistent, because I was very sort of comfortable just doing what I did and making money and whatever. And, you know, it's just like, I didn't have the, the get up and go to do it, but you stayed on it. And then I think, I don't know, a month ago or whatever, you were just like, why don't we just do it? Like, you know, you just literally called me and were like, why don't we just do it? I and I was going to do it tomorrow. We're just yeah. going to do it. And he's like, what are we going to talk about? I was like, I don't care. We're just going to exactly. do it. <laughs> My first question was like, what are we even going to talk about? I don't like, care. Which is funny because we never, ever, ever run out of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. But my first thought was like, what are we going to talk about? Oh, wait a minute. 
are people going to want to hear this? Like, do they want to hear from me? Do they want to hear from you? Do they want to hear from us? We don't care. Just, we don't do care. we just like <laughs> us and we just want to do this? Like, if we, I had all those thoughts. But the, but the point in all this is like, I don't know, like, I, I, <laughs> this sort of gets back to the kind of original context of this conversation. I think we define ourselves by our circumstances, mm-hmm. right? So for me, I'm the married guy, the guy with kids and all that kind of stuff. So when you ask me, what's my story? I don't even know if I've ever contemplated my story. I'm just trying to take care of the wife. I'm trying to take care of the kids. I'm trying to take care of, you know, my mom in in emotional ways and support her because she lost her husband of 40 years, my dad. Um, You know, I'm trying to be a good brother to my to my brothers, a good uncle to my nephews and nieces. So we, I don't even know if I define me, you know, except if somebody but said, who you are know, you? I, yeah, if, if someone said, well, who are you know, who are you? I'd be like, oh, I'm a, I'm a good guy. You know, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. I like to laugh, you know, just all this really generic stuff. So all of that is to say, like, we got to stop defining ourselves by our circumstances. Like if you're broke, you're not a loser, right? If you got laid off your job or you lost your job, you're not a loser. Uh, if life is throwing you opportunities to reconstruct what you do, then embrace it. But, but, and I'm talking to me too. I'm not just, I'm not just talking to you because Lord knows I could, especially when I was again, working in IT, I mean, I, I literally flirted with uh, 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 depression a lot of times, mm-hmm. just like, God, is this what I'm going to be doing when I'm 65 and ready to retire and all this? Like, is this what I am? I'm, I'm a freaking IT person. And you know what I used to tell people? And, and I don't even know if I've really uh, shared this before, but I used to uh, uh, tell people I, the one thing that I really hate about being in IT is I have zero effect on the world. Exactly. That's how I felt in poker. Yeah. I have no, I, I looked at people, you know, you look at a Martin Luther King or you look at a Frederick Douglass or, you know, uh, Barack Obama, maybe a couple white people. I don't know. And you, <laughs> you and I would just, like, <laughs> I'm so kidding, but I would just admire like, God, how great it must feel to be an effect on the world. Like, I don't care about fame. I care about money only in the sense that I just want to be t- to be taken care of and to take care of those that I love. It's not about becoming Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos. It's literally just about, you know, being, not worrying about money. If I didn't ever have to worry about money, it doesn't matter how much money I make or don't make. But I would really just admire people of any race, sex, religion, creed that had an effect on uh, people. Hell, the one thing I said about uh, George Floyd, right, was that even though he he definitely, you know, wouldn't wanted to, wouldn't have wanted to go out the way he went out, none of us would, and it's sad and tragic, at least his life is going to represent change I believe I believe things have changed and are going to continue to change because of of the circumstances in which he died like I would love for my god don't this is that probably this is probably going to sound so bad coming on the heels of giving a George Floyd reference but I would just love to have my life like affect masses well I think it's it's meaning right I mean I and I wonder if it seems like we get to this certain age, it's right around here, right? Like where we start to realize like that's that's what we want. Like we want to have meaning and have purpose. And I think the biggest way that, that you do that is by giving back. But you know, like in your twenties, you're just figuring out life and it's all about you and your party and you're having fun and, and you should, as you should, right? You're, you're just, I mean, you're a new adult, newly on your own. And, and then you get to your 30s and then maybe you're getting married and have a family. And by the way, this is not, you know, this is just what has been. And I think, you know, people are setting their own ideas of what life is now. But um, 
maybe when people are younger and listening to this, maybe they can learn earlier that, you know, it's, it's not about the, the job that you hate just so that you make the money so that you can buy the house so that you, it's, it's just about living the life that whoever you are. And I think if there's anything to be learned from like the whole, like, what's your story is that figure out what it is. You know, I, I feel like kids know, right? They're born knowing, they're born knowing who they are, right? They've got these personalities and they've got these ideas and they've got the way of life and the way they interact. And they just know instinctively who they are, right? I mean, how can they, how can they not, right? Until we start telling them otherwise or tell them, don't do this and don't do that. And all oh, right, and go to school and in school, it's all just about, you know, pay attention and obey my rules and this and that. And until we like crush the poor little spirits, unless they're my kids. And then they just like, nobody can tell them <laughs> nothing. They're going to do whatever the hell they want. Like, <laughs> so, um, but I think that's important. I think that we lose track of, of who we are along the way, doing all the things that, you know, we do to like this hamster wheel of life, right? Like go to school and then go to more school and then get married and then have a house and, you know, keep that job and get the health insurance and, you know, like, but you forget about thinking about like who you are, you know, it's almost considered selfish if you're thinking about yourself. Cause even you say like, how do you define yourself? Well, I take care of my family and I take care of my wife and I take care of my mom and I take care of me. Right. Like, but who are you? Right. Like it's, I think that's important. I think, I think maybe that's the piece where we're having like these mental health issues is we're having these like crises of like, what is happening to me? We don't even know who we are really anymore. And we're never giving the tools to really like work with that work with man, uh, managing, first of all, figuring out who we are and then managing it. And, and what do we do about it? So uh, fun fact here, um, America is still pretty much the richest country on earth. I mean, China's like coming up on us rapidly, but America's still pretty much by far and away the richest country on earth. But I saw a statistic uh, not too long ago that we're like somewhere around the hundredth happiest country on earth and so to me that's just a clear correlation with money doesn't equate to happiness but but even further than that or, or health. whatever right where right. are we on the health state not not very high as exactly. well not 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 yes exactly um but what i was going to say is so whatever you're doing to make money is probably not giving you any sort of happiness or satisfaction. Because if you were happy doing what you did to make money, because we spend so much time doing whatever it is we do to make money, then you would be a happier, happier person. And we would be a happier country. We'd be higher on that list, right? So it's tough, in my opinion, it's tough to be, it's tough to be an American right? Forget, forget race and sex and all that kind of stuff and religion, any of that stuff. Let's, let's just consider us all one people right now. And, and one people, we're all Americans, right? To me, this country is so hard to, to, to navigate and to, to get through. And by get through, I mean, literally get through life because the country is so rich and we have, we're so affluent on the world stage that it's almost like people are almost taught you're not successful unless you're a baller, right? Unless you're just unless you're just making bank and got the fat house and the nice car, and especially in California, right? California might be the toughest of the of the of the country, California, New York, right? Because we're the most expensive places uh, to be. So living and thriving in in say California or New York is not easy. If you, well, tell people, I, if, if you tell people here you make $100,000 a year, they're like, <laughs> and? But right? again, you know, I, but I go think to Mississippi and say you make $100,000 oh, yeah, a year. Yeah, they're like, you, you might as well own half the state, you know? <laughs> half the state. Uh, Minnesota. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's exactly it. I think that's where a lot of our like mental crises are coming. And, we, and maybe we, we're starting to just realize it, but is that we're trying to live up to somebody else's ideal, right? We're trying to live up to what we think we're meant to be. We're trying to live this status quo life and because we don't really truly spend time figuring out who we are and what we want, right? So now I think, what I think is I have to get what I'm told I have to get. I gotta get the house, you know, with it, all that stuff to be successful. 
but something's not sitting right with you. You don't feel like this doesn't, because that's not what you want. Like probably you want something, maybe you want to go and, and live on a mountaintop and be a shepherd. Who knows? Like, who cares? Like the point is you have to know, you have to know. And, and sometimes just sitting with yourself and figuring out is the hardest thing. I feel like we need to have, like, I, I talk about this in my podcast too. It's like, why don't, why is this class not in school? Like in school, we have like history and how about like present like how about present moment like who we are like and, and instead of asking them and like hey like you say I hate like that question like what do you do instead of asking kids what do you want to be when you grow up who the fuck cares like who do you want to be like what do you want to be like they're supposed to know when they're like four. Oh, I know I'm gonna be a cop like shut up they do not know any of that stuff like start giving them the tools to look within and figure out who they are so they can live in alignment with who they are well, school is, is certainly not designed to <laughs> actually foster any sort of, you know, <laughs> thought on, on, on who you actually want to be. It's all designed to, you know, define for you what you're, what do you want to do in life to make money, right? It has nothing to do with like, you know. I is it supposed to though? Like, I mean, who, who said, like, why is it meant to do well, that? Well, I mean, I mean, that's probably a whole nother podcast. I mean, I think, I think education is important, but like, for instance, I have a, a few college age uh, nephews who I just, just love to death. I love those guys. I watch them come into the world and, you know, when I'm around them, you know, conversation in, inevitably goes towards like, you know, like how is school going, you know, your major, have you picked your major, all that good stuff. Um, and the conversation then will inevitably go to me saying to them, do something that's going to make you happy. I mean, their parents probably hate me for saying it because, you know, we all want our kids to be super successful and all that. And I think that has more to do with just so you don't struggle in life. Um, not, not, not for status, but just, we just, we don't want our kids to struggle. But anyway, I, I tell the kids all the time, like, dude, I, I kid you not, the jobs that I've had in my life that made the most money typically were where I was the least happy or was able to spend the least amount of time with loved ones and friends and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway. So that's why we're going to be podcasters and we're going to be super rich doing what we love. So and let me just make one last point <laughs> and then we can close out this, this wonderful episode. Uh, I'm I'm so happy we're doing this. You know it because I I text you all the time. Like I'm just so jacked. I'm just so jacked about doing this right now. Let's put but out five episodes today. Let's, like let's no do five a day. <laughs> let's just inundate the people. Let let's just live stream twenty four hour live stream of 20, <laughs> 24 hours of highly uncircumcised. Just us talking all day long, all but day listen, long. I you know what my number one reason for being hesitant and sort of, you know, there was even like a week at a time where I just wouldn't talk to you because I knew that if I talked to you, <laughs> you were going to talk to me about the podcast. I kid you not. I literally like avoided you, even though I'd be thinking about you. I'd be like, oh, I should really text Nicole. I should call Nicole. <laughs> I'm really dropping the ball here. I literally would just sort of like, eh, let me just stay away for a minute because I know she's going to be like, when are we doing the podcast? Literally, you would just call me and not even say hi. You'd just be like, when are we doing the podcast? <laughs> I didn't want to do it, or I should say I was hesitant about doing it because I couldn't see it and I couldn't see it being successful. Mm -hmm. And now that we're doing it, I don't even know if I care so much about exactly. That's what that's purpose like is. I'm, it's the yeah, path. It's that's what I'm saying. It's exactly. not the, that's what I, I've talked to Mike about this like a million times. Like, oh no, I got to make my, I'm like, the point is, I think when you're living, when you, if, if everything I've said today makes someone go like, oh yeah, whatever, shut up. But I think the point is, is and you're like, well, I can't, I can't just do whatever I want, make a living. Number one, I think you can, like we could have that debate sometime. I really think you can, anything. And we'll, we won't do it today because it's been too long. But, um, but number two, I mean, the point is, it's, it's the path is where the purpose is, you know, it's like living that and, and, taking those actions every day towards like, like, like this, like, you know, maybe we'll have five fans and, and make zero dollars from it, but I want to do this because it feels good. It feels like maybe through our conversations, we can not only help ourselves, but help 
help others, you know, go through some, go through some shit like we've gone through. And I guess maybe that's what it's all about. High five. So, uh, so maybe we can just leave them with the question. Ask yourself, do a little uh, introspection. Who are you? Who are you? What's your story? What's your story? Thanks. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye.